Hello and welcome to the Somerset News Network. It's getting mad out there. I've now this has got to be politically motivated. It started with the sad death of a black man by the police in America. Totally wrong, totally out of order. So the Black Lives Matter start protesting. That's fair enough, everybody's got the right to protest. But the Black Lives Matter organisers are committed Marxists. They admit it. They've been, see, you know, they admit it on the website and on interviews that they've done. They're what's called community organisers. So you've got the public feeling, they tune into it, and then they use it for their own ends. And now they're starting to destroy public and private property. In the States, they've been looting shops. Some guys decided to loot a gun shop. Big mistake, the guy got shot. Well, what do you expect if you're going to rob somebody and that you're allowed to defend yourself? You know, where does this end? What is their aims? Well, their aims is to bring down the government. Trump and Boris. They don't want a conservative right-wing type government. They want a Marxist left-wing socialist communist state. That's it. That's the end game. It's nothing to do with racism or, or social justice. It's all to do with power and control. What somebody ought to look at is, is who is funding these people? I, I don't know. I, I've got no personal knowledge of this. But you've got people like Soros funding uh, We Are Change which is linked to Black Lives Matters, which is Marxist. You've got the Black Lives Matter people in Seattle with machine guns on the streets declaring independence. You know, how? where is it going to end? When, when are we going to say, right, hang on a minute. Yes, Colin the Black Guy was wrong. Yes, we are all people. Black, white, green, red. Whatever colour you are. It doesn't matter. But you can't let communists take over. There has to be someone to stand up and say, hang on a minute, let, let's, whoa. Let's stop and think a minute. It's even now going into everything. The television programme, The Dukes of Hazard. They want to take the programme off the air because it's got the southern flag on top of the car. Now, I can't remember the programme being racist one iota. You know, it was a brilliant show. You had Boss Hog, who was the local crime lord. You know, you had his sidekick. Roscoe P. Coltrane. And then you had the Duke boys. Luke and Bo. You know, just good old boys. You know, doing no harm. You know, like two modern day Robin Hoods. And they would get into scrapes. The boss would try and fix them up uh, with a crime that he was committing. And they end up at the end of the program turning it round. It was just a fun show. No way is putting the southern flag on, or the confederate flag, on top of the car racist. Full stop. They want to take down confederate statues. In Britain, they want to, they've taken down the Colston Hall statue, because he was a slave trader. Now, you can't re you can't erase history. What's happened is happened, however wrong it is. 
History is history. And by removing people's names and the uh, association with what they did, does it wipe out what they did out of the memories of people? Is it better not to have the is, is it better to have the statue there and and point at it and tell people this is Colston he was not a very nice guy he made his money on slavery or do you take it down and forget about it you know it was not just the whites that managed the slave trade when they used to go down to the Ivory Coast, the English slave managers, traders, whatever you want to call them, would buy black slaves off black people in Africa. The different tribes would sell each other's tribe members for money. They'd been doing it for thousands of years. When the white man came along, Wrong in my opinion. He just carried on the trade. We had the triangle, didn't we? We would go down to Africa, pick up slaves that we would buy off black people, take them to Jamaica and America, and they would work for no wages. I expect we fed them and um, housed them very poorly treated them like animals. Slavery was wrong, full stop. I am not in flavour of slavery. In our village, we had a teacher living who was Hannah Moore. She was a social reformer in the late 1700s, early 1800s. She campaigned against slavery. You know, she's buried in Somerset. You know, you know, slavery is wrong and we know it's wrong. England, if I remember my history right, was the first country to abolish slavery. We had the Slavery Abolishment Act and that was in 1833, which was before the Battle of the Alamo, where David Crockett and David Boone died. That was in 1836. So marching on the streets complaining about slavery, yeah, fair enough. But to damage property and try and bring down a government because of it, that's wrong. That's totally out of order. And to try and take television shows off the air, like the Dukes of Hazard. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, I've got this little clip, and this is Ben Jones. Now, Ben Jones was in The Dukes of Hazard. He played Cougar, the garage mechanic. He ended up being a Democrat and being a congressman. Now, you know, he's, he's on your side, BLM. He's the guy's on your side. And he explains. I've got this clip from Fox News. I hope they don't mind me using it. And he explains about the flag on the General Lee. And I'm going to leave you with this. This is Ian. Con Somerset News Network. Signing off. Saying, let's stop and just think and start talking to each other. Be fair and nice to each other. Anyway, Cougar, ex please explain about the Confederate flag on the General Lee. Well, one of the most iconic pop culture images of the Confederate flag on the General Lee and the Dukes of Hazard. You remember that. And now, even that is about to disappear. Warner Brothers, the latest company to pull that flag from its products. But one person who is not backing down 
Cooter himself. Actor Ben Jones writing on Facebook this, we are not going to be shamed into turning our backs on our heritage. I will fight these people until hell freezes over. And Ben Jones, who owns three stores named for his Dukes of Hazard character, joins me now to discuss. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you. Good to be with you, Elizabeth. I said I will fight them till hell freezes over, and then I will fight them on the ice. Why? I came out of the civil rights movement. That's how I got into uh, politics. <clears throat> and, uh, the, I was arrested and sat in and had um, shot at by the Ku Klux Klan, sucker punch, the whole nine yards of that. But we changed the South, and we brought black and white together, and we, re we created... We rebuild the South uh, from Jim Crow and segregation and all of that into the most progressive, biracial, fastest growing economy in the country. We have done that together. We have reconciled. And to me, this whole movement, this hysteria of cultural cleansing breaks down that. It, it, we, we're in danger of, of giving up those gains we have so won. So it was great difficulty to mm. get that. But we've done that. We've worked together in a biracial way to build the Sun Belt, fastest growing economy in the country. This threatens all of those good things that have happened. It is, there is an hysteria going on of cultural cleansing. Look, you can't remove a symbol that's for, just for on our show. It's, our show was, had drew 30 million viewers a week for years. It's shown all over the world. Right now, people, young kids ha, of all colors sure. are watching that show and that car, and they see that flag in a positive context. Sir, let me, we're very proud of that. Yes, and you are, but there are some, in fairness, that aren't. So, Ben, let me ask you this. When you say it's a symbol of history and our culture and it can't be cleansed, What's your reaction then to some people who, A, might think you're racist for saying that, and B, who believe that it's a symbol of hate, particularly when it's on uh, government-issued uh, license plates, for example, or uh, hung uh, outside a state capitol? So are you worried that people are going to think you're racist? And do you think that, aside from the private enterprise and business, that the government should not hang this flag? Well, there's an argument to be made there because it's, it represents all of the taxpayers. But where does it stop? Yeah, we, we're already hearing calls to remove statues of like Robert E. Lee and renaming this street, taking down that monument, that statue, this and that. This does not reconcile people. It breaks them apart. That, that it is true. That symbol has been used for hateful purposes. We know that. But the vast majority of its uses is not about that. You know, if this young man, this murderer that, who committed one of the most evil acts in history and took those lives, he, he is trying to break down reconciliation and understanding and communication. But if he hadn't, if they, if they found a picture of him with an American flag, none of this feeding frenzy of cultural cleansing would be going on. Uh, he was one sick individual, and it does well, not thought. represent the 70 million of us, 70 million Americans mm -hmm. who are descended from those who fought for the Let Confederacy. Let me ask you this. Bottom line, are you going to continue to sell Confederate flag items in your stores? Yes. And are you worried that this is just going to get worse, that you're going to face backlash, that some people are going to say anyone who decides to do that is a racist? Oh, I've, I've been called things like that before, but I'm not. And I know that, and I think most people who know me know that. Uh, you know, uh, my mentor in politics in Georgia was Andrew Young. I would play basketball with Dr. King's son, Martin III, a lot. We raised money doing that. Uh, John Lewis, uh, I've worked many fights with sure. him. People who call me a racist don't know my heart, and I don't think they know the heart of the, of the 70 million Americans who are simply trying to respect and receive the same tolerance and understanding and diversity, uh, uh, you know, who, who respect our ancestors, understand why, what they did in the context of their times. Uh, slavers okay. exist in this country since 1619. If we start down this slippery slope, we're going to have to rename the capital of the United States. We're going to have to, which was uh, named for the biggest slaver in Virginia of his time. We'll have to take away the Declaration of Independence, which was written right. by a man who bought and sold him the beats, well, and the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. Well, All of those strong, things. You have a strong are fair message game today. now. 
Excuse me? You're, you're taking a strong stance on this, and you know the debate is going to continue to go on. Before we go, I it just is. want to thank you for we're, being we're, honest we're, with our viewers. This is all just beginning. Yeah, it's all thank just beginning. Thank you for having and me on, And it could get Elizabeth. worse. You know, you're hearing from former Congressman, Democratic Congressman Ben Jones there of the Dukes of Hazard. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me on.